Hey, what's up, guys? You guys know that this show wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for our sponsors. I'm just going to give a couple highlights right here. I know I'm going to miss a few because uh, this is something new, but eventually I'm going to have more organization. I'll be able to hit all the key points. But right now, first off the top of my head, I'm going to say Let's Singers Whiskey. Let's Singers Whiskey. Obviously, we have a bourbon. We have a rye, a spice or cinnamon whiskey, right? Yeah, I call it a cinnamon. Yeah, and a, and a, and a spiced rum. So those are amazing. Find them in a, in a place near you. If you cannot find the unicorn of whiskey, please go ahead and contact one of the social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and uh, we'll tell you what states we do have it in currently. There's a few surprises. We have a few big states that we just signed, so I'm pretty excited about that. Another one of our sponsors, and I'm proud to be an owner of this, is Warfighter Tobacco. Warfighter Tobacco is a brand that started no more than about a year ago and actually took off from the Drinker Bros podcast and now is continuing on to jump on with this podcast, uh, obviously because I am one of the shareholders. <laughs> uh, but some exciting news in the Warfighter Tobacco world. Uh, we have partnered up with a big, big company. Placencia Cigars is the ones that are making ours now. They are producing them for us. Uh, the quality of them has just shot through the roof. They're Nicaragua brand now. And uh, they're ex- it's an exciting new thing. I think if you guys have had them before and you love them, you're going to freaking die for these now. Uh, go check out WarfighterTobacco.com, Warfighter Tobacco on Instagram and Facebook. Give them a follow and check them out. Another one of our sponsors, you already know, Steel. This is one of our our, our, our big st- sponsors that jumped on board and helped us out really early on. And that is, not to be confused with Warfighter Tobacco, but this is Warfighter Hemp. Yes. If you're uh, tired of the opiates and the zombie apocalypse, <laughs> <laughs> the zombie dope, or P- PTSD symptoms. Uh, the CBD oil. The CBD right? oil is kind of the way to go for, there's no... Yeah, there's no psychedelic there's effect. No in invo- there's no involvement with uh, psychedelic effects or anything like that. So. And I, am I correct? This is legal in every state? Yes, it I'm, is legal. Yeah, so that's one of the things. This is uh, something that Boone is a big, big uh, advocate for. This is uh, CBD oils. This is supposed to be. I haven't tried it yet, personally. I, I need to jump on board, uh, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to yet or not, so I'm actually looking into that. Yeah. And I think I am. Even though I'm military, I think I'm still allowed to you use You still got CBD. that stigma of it. Right. I'm nervous, right? Yeah. Like, all of a sudden you put, but let me double check on that for you guys before you do it if you're military. Anyone else, go ahead and check it out. Um, this is... Warfighter Hemp. Uh, what's the promo code for Warfighter Hemp? The promo code for Warfighter Hemp is Vinny. V I N N Y. It's it. That's Vinny. it. Just Vinny. Promo code is You're Vinny. the man on that. Well, You're the I man like on that. that. If you use Vinny as a promo code, you'll get uh, a little bit of percentage off. Am I right? Yes, sir. You will get 10%. 10% off. And, and uh, you guys use that code. Uh, check it out. Let me know how it goes. I would love to hear some of the feedback on this. Don't forget, that's Warfighter Hemp. Uh, yes, and another one of our sponsors, Article 15 Clothing. You guys know where it's at, article15clothing.com. Check them out. They got women's shirts, men's shirts. They also got some winter line coming out here soon. Check it out. Hey, if you use the promo code ROCCO, R-O-C-C-O, I'm pretty sure it still gives you 10%. If it does, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know. Our next sponsor is Valor. ValorSpirits.com has a sweetener that is made from the nectar of the agave plant. Uh, these guys are two combat veterans, one Marine, one Army, are now just living a life trying to make a business and make it happen. I'm very excited to have these guys on board. If you guys want to check their product, you can find it on Amazon. If you're going to use the promo code, there's the only way you can get it on Amazon. You can use the promo code called Vinny Rock, and that's capital V, capital R. Okay, so check them out. That's Valor. It's an art. It's not an artificial. It's an actual sweetener. It's an actual sweetener. Yeah, it's, it's, an actual sweetener and it's good. It's very good, and it's made from the nectar of the agave plant. I love that. It's uh, I put it in my coffee. It's do you? It's, yeah, it's good. You fucking sweet ass bitch. <laughs> All right, guys, go check them out. Hey, what's up, guys? This is the Vinny Rock Podcast, and uh, I have some special guests with me today. Besides my man, the same man. It's uh, not really my... That sounded weird. <laughs> Steel Kasner. Let's yeah, repeat that again. Yeah, that's weird. It's not my man. But uh, in, in studio today, or in my house, should I say, is uh, Warfire Tobacco. What's up, guys? How you doing, man? How's it going? So we got three of the Warfire Tobacco studs and me, which means four of the Warfighter guys. Awkward moment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wanted to bring the guys on because they actually they're tra- traveling through, uh, headed to Vegas, and uh, so we want to talk about some of the stuff that's going on in Warfighter Tobacco, a lot of exciting stuff, and I think these guys would have uh, the answers a lot better than I can say it, so, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, one of the first things, um, originally, let's go back to the beginning of Warfighter. Warfighter started when? When exactly was it? Because I jumped on board late. 
uh, probably about two, not quite two years ago now. <laughs> Pretty much, I remember <clears throat> on the set of Range 15, <clears throat> you brought cigars with you, didn't you? Uh, no, uh, that was... Well, you talked about it. Yes, that was the conception... That was the thought then. Hey, why don't you introduce him? Yeah, this so is this is really is? awesome. So the guy talking right now, this is this is gonna be Scott. Scott is a Warfighter Scott, and your Instagram handle is what? Uh, Warfighter Scott. Warfighter Scott, genius. Uh, with an underscore in there. Yeah, with an under, Warfighter yeah. underscore Scott. There and you this go. is Warfighter underscore John. Warfighter or John. Warfighter or whatever underscore you want to call me, yeah. asshole. It all works. Uh, we we refrain from asshole, but yeah. You know. <laughs> Just kidding, dude. You can cuss. I'm just, just kidding, dude. You can cuss all the fuck you want. And then last we have is George Patton. And what yours is uh, Warfighter George as well. Warfighter underscore George. There you go. And you guys can check him out. Also, Warfighter, uh, Warfighter Tobacco is the Instagram handle and warfightertobacco.com is the website. Obviously, one of the major sponsors of the podcast. So um, where were we? Want to talk about like, yeah, the beginning, when it kind of came to and why. How about that? Yeah, so... Um you know, I, I was at the filming of Range 15, uh, and I got to talking to Logan, uh, Black Rifle Logan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I said, hey, you know, I've, I've owned a gun shop for this long. And, you know, at the time I was, uh, you know, having a little bit of issues with some partners and stuff like that. And, and then, the you know, the the gun industry is, you know, pretty low margin, you know, yeah. not a non-consumable. So you sell somebody something right. and then they, you don't see them again. Hey, they probably don't, if not you sell them the right product, gun. they're not going to, they don't need to come back. Yeah. Not too many people like us buy serial guns, right? We just keep buying guns and, and right. like, I already have a Glock 19. Yeah. But now you can put paint on it and get a different one. <laughs> now you can go akimbo with it and get two of them. <laughs> there you go. So, so yeah. So essentially I was talking to Logan about a, a consumable manly product that, we could brand yeah man know. ponds are done already yeah They're done man ponds yeah, so. yeah you don't want to do that so uh, you know and, and so uh fast forward six months and then i also met george on the filming yeah, of range 15 george did as well. exactly yeah. uh you know and george and i kind of hit it off there and then we met a couple times in vegas at shot show and and a, you know the premiere and a couple other things we've all had those encounters with george yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> memorable. Is it meets George and the crazy stuff like that, or you what? Just, you just meet George where there's drinking. <laughs> oh, I see. No, George is George is always a huge supporter of. I mean, everything all encompassing of Range 15, Article 15, freaking all the guys, Ranger up, like everything encompassing at that time when Ranger, uh, excuse me, when Range 15 was being made. George is a huge supporter in that, and and as well as when we did after we did some premieres, he helped set up some of the premieres, like the one we went we went to um, Palm Springs, right? Twenty nine uh, Palms. Palms. Yeah, we went to Twenty Nine Palms, and we did one with a bunch of Marines out there, and it was pretty good. So we've all kind of walked around in the same circle, you know what I mean? It was a kind of a small niche kind of group, and uh, it all worked out where George eventually came on board with with Warfighter Tobacco. I eventually came on board with Warfighter Tobacco, and John was already on board with Warfighter Tobacco from the inception of it with Scott. Because, get me wrong, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, uh, John works with you. Yeah, John and I were actually deployed together in 2003. We were both uh, infantry guys in the 101st, yep. and uh, so we've been we've known each other forever. Years. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> he looked at his watch, it's too yeah. freaking long now. Yeah, he's kept me warm in cold nights. <laughs> That's when you know you're a good battle buddy. Still, yeah, in, in, in the military, if you're cold, you usually battle buddy. Real, you know, you, you've camped a few times. Yeah, yeah. I'm a camper, but I've I've seen a I saw a good picture the other day where there's two guys, two military guys, are laying next to each other with their, with their whoobies, I guess is yeah. what it is. Yeah, next, yeah, right next to each other, and it said, uh, you know, my other buddies are in college, graduating college right now. And, I'm here with this guy. You know? <laughs> yeah, my whole thing is I used to say is like nothing's uh, anything below 32 degrees is called survival. <laughs> like you just got to stay warm, create friction, and stay warm. It's not gay if it's cold out. It's so. not. Yeah, I, I agree. It's one of those. It's one of those <laughs> great things in the military, man. You learn is is boundaries are gone when yeah. it, when cold weather comes in. It's just like stay warm. <laughs> there was another one the other day where. These guys were taking a shower. One guy was taking a shower, butt naked, laughing, smiling for a picture, and the other guy was rubbing his back, washing his back. For him. It's like, all right, that's what yeah, that's, do. that's not crossing the line. That's uh, helping the battle buddy out. <laughs> that's all it is. And so this is now coming up on about a year and a half now, correct? Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe a little bit longer, but yeah, somewhere around there. About a year and a half. So, so what happened was, um, Scott came out to a couple events that we were doing, and we started talking. I was like, man, I'm real interested in being in the cigar world because I started smoking cigars around a little bit before that. I smoked some in Iraq. I smoked some in Afghanistan. Um, I wasn't a big cigar aficionado, I guess, if you will, until later on. I started like, man, I really want to get, like, I had to quit dipping at one point. And so how do you supplement that? Well, maybe tobacco, a cigar, right? Because I never wanted to be a cigarette smoker. So I started smoking cigars and learning on YouTube and whatnot and how to cut them and all, all the, you know, the, the etiquette that's, that's a lot of us don't know. 
You know what I mean? And so then I jumped on board with these guys and I started learning a, a lot more etiquette and a lot of shitty etiquette, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's only shitty depending on who's watching. John is a savage. I've seen him spit half of his cigar out of his mouth because he just rips them and smokes them and then throws. Dude, for breakfast, he's a cigar breakfast smoker. And John's inhales too, right? Yeah, no, dude. No, no, no. no, no he doesn't. can't inhale cigars. That's no, but not, he's no. a serious breakfast smoker. Like more than I've ever seen anyone. Like it's just him and You've Hollywood also, is the other one. It was also, also, that was at IPCPR. Uh, yeah. And I probably ripped 10, 15 cigars a day. Easy. Well, and he, he power smokes. He power yeah. smokes. Yeah, yeah. So a cigar that I smoke in an hour and 20, hour and a half, he'll smoke in 45 minutes. Well, John's not a small dude. John, what are you, 6'2, 6'3? Six, 6'1. Six, six, one. Six, one? Dude. I, got, I you got look boots. a lot bigger than 6'1. Right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, what are you at, 240? Yeah, right about there. Massive dude. Just massive dude. Yeah, he smokes a lot. So it was kind of crazy. <laughs> he smokes I just, a lot. Dude, you just missed it still. You weren't there for us. We were all at the, in Vegas doing the uh, IPCPR. I, IPCPR, and it's pretty much a cigar convention. And I'm just, dude, I'm usually a one cigar a day guy. And one hitter. Not even a day, guy. like one cigar a couple weeks, right? Dude, you show up there and everyone's, we went to a breakfast and the place was covered in smoke. And I'm like, what? and I was like, yeah, there's a great breakfast cigar. I'm like, what the fuck is a breakfast cigar? Like, does it have eggs in it? Does it taste like yeah. ham? Like a breakfast I heard that breakfast was amazing. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. And then you go out to the field, to the to the to the floor, and there's everyone smoking a cigar. And you have to kind of because you're walking around all these different well well known cigar companies, and they're handing them out sometimes. You're in that scene, yeah. right? And so you kind of like want to taste some. You're kind of wondering how yours. We wanted to kind of see how Warfire Tobacco Cigars compete against some of the better ones out there. And, and I mean, well, and, other ones, not better ones. Excuse me, other, other ones, ones. Other, <laughs> well-known brands. How about that? Well-known yeah. brands. There's better a lot of well-known, well-known brands. But here's the funny thing. The coolest thing about that is, out of all the well-known brands, our social media almost beats all of them. Almost, but they don't just don't understand the whole social media world thing yet. Or, they don't realize yeah. how lucrative that can be or how important it is in business these days. They were looking at us like, wait, what? How do well, you they've been around from? probably since like for yeah, decades. Ten, 10, 15 years, and they have, you know, the same amount or, you know, less followers than we There's do. There's some that only have it, like 5,000 yeah. followers, and I was like, damn, it, and they're well-known it, names. And it's yeah. because they don't market outside of their circle, you know. I, that was one of the reasons we got I got into the cigar world is because – you know, I kind of knew how I needed to market after right. watching Article 15 and, yeah. and and lead slingers and all that, and and so you know we grabbed onto the cigars and and uh, I, I went to the show and you know they were speaking you know like old guy cigar lingo and yeah. they were selling to old guy cigar yeah, owners. Their 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 original demographic has been the same demographic for years and years and years. And then now the guys like us, and there's there's probably other couples, but guys like us have been able to create a brand that's focused around our culture, our community. We're like your veterans, your 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 law enforcement. You know what I mean? And guys who identify like, dude, I don't know the roots and berries and everything about the you know about a cigar, but what I do know is when we have a good mission, when I hang out with the boys and we do a, an awesome uh, op, we go smoke a cigar and like talk about it. Same as some of us do in drinking about it, right? We, we sit there and have some drinks and bullshit. Like, man, it was a fucking badass mission. And overseas, some of us are, some of us are first cigars were overseas. And so, yeah, and, and that's, you know, that's kind of the reason Warfighter came about is, you know, you, you ask anybody in the military, hey, have you smoked a cigar? 80% of the time or better, the answer is yes. Ask them what brand they smoked, and they have no idea. No fucking so, switch sweets, black and mild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was smoking those in college, son. I inhaled those accidentally. I didn't know any better. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did the idea of the cigar company come about? Like, who's who? It, it was kind of it was kind of my idea to start it, like, and it was more of a you know I need an industry that I can you know like I said before have the brand and be able to market it, and then uh, Chris Verdico and I uh, we got drunk together one time at Shot Show and. Uh, we're, we decided we're whatever act- happened, happened that night stayed in there <laughs> that night. <laughs> we kind of decided then and there that we're actually going to do it. Yeah. And so we started the company. We we didn't know what we were doing. We got it going, got it off the ground, and then it caught up to us to the point where we yeah. grew it. Um, you know, we got all of our cigars were sourced out of the Dominican. Uh, we grew it so fast that that our supplier couldn't necessarily keep up. Yeah, and this this became a big problem because what happened, I'm, I'm going to tell you what exactly happened why, is because the Drinking Bros. Yeah. The Drinking Bros podcast. The Drinking Bros podcast, obviously that was one of my, that's my first podcast that I was involved with. Uh, me and the boys, JT, Matt, and, and Ross, we decided we needed some sponsorships. We are getting some really good numbers on it, and so, boom, Warfire Tobacco jumped on board. And that, like, it 
it, it went crazy from there. From there, you actually had the root of the, the culture or the root of the community listening already to the podcast and now jumping on board and supporting some of the sponsors and Warfire Tobacco was one of them. Yeah, that's a great thing to get involved with, too. Is about, I mean, cigars. I mean, Dude, it was great. You're so, a gentleman when you start smoking a cigar. Well, I felt really fucking classy smoking a cigar. <laughs> What and John? Did you just get involved later, or did you? Uh, he was kind of in the beginning with him, right? You, you, you kind of shortly after. Yeah, uh, Chris and uh, Chris and Scott um, started it conceptually. Yeah. Uh, they got the company off the ground, uh, got all the initial supply lines set up, and everything like that. Um, and then myself and uh, Brian Betty got brought on. Yep, Brian. There you um, go. Sorry, I forgot about Brian. Yep, uh, Brian does a lot of our Facebook, yes, uh, social media stuff. Uh, he's really good at it. He's solid, um, man. He's doing a good job. Yeah, and so then from there, uh, make I came aboard, uh, George came aboard, and then from there now I feel like uh, it's it's a it's a power team right now. We're killing it. Yeah. Teams are doing really well. And then, you know my my favorite thing about it, like a lot of people don't know, if you guys have smoked some of the earlier uh, Warfire Tobacco cigars, you're going to be highly impressed with the new changes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Does, George, you want to speak on that? No, exactly. I think it's the the. It's partly that we're proud of the cigars that originally came out. They were really good cigars. Yes. I think the change came about because we were looking for something more consistent um, from cigar to cigar, making sure that every single time you smoke that 5.56 five, or 762, it's the exact same cigar. Yeah. So that was basically yes. kind of where Scott and everybody kind of talked about it and said, okay, we got to basically find out what we can do to develop a better cigar. Right. So the, what, what it, you know, the taste of the cigars was good. Right. The problem is we ran it, we, we got real big real fast, and the construction of the cigars, we ran into some issue with them being a little tight packed and yeah. that kind of thing. And so, as well as keeping up with, a, with a, the supply yeah. and demand, right? Yeah. The mm-hmm. demand was crazy and the supply wasn't able to generate them as fast. And so that's why you were having issues with the, with, yeah. uh, with that, the wrap, right? That and we knew we wanted to go to brick and mortars and get, get our Warfighter brand out to every cigar store in the country. But we knew at our current pace that supply wouldn't be able to keep up with that. Yeah. So we went down to Nicaragua, uh, sourced to a, one of the best factories in the industry there. Um, and we used uh, Placencia uh, at a Esteli, Nicaragua. They, and they make cigars for a lot of people. For a lot of them, yeah. yeah. So and essentially, so, they're, they're just a well-known family that uh, has been in the business for years, and they make uh, cigars for multiple other big brands out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we until brought, until this year, didn't they just come out with their? They started pushing yeah. their brand out this year. They actually pushed their own brand out this year. Yeah, which is great cigars. It's a great it cigar. Is, cigar yeah. as well. Great cigar. Yeah. Uh, and so we we went down there and with uh, David Blanco, who is our blender, who's also active. Uh, re, or he, I think he's in the reserves. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a, but he's an active. He's active, and he is. Yeah, uh, he well, he's a veteran, combat veteran. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he has his own line of cigars as well. He does, yeah. And, and he's our blender, and so it's kind of cool. It's kind of stayed in the family of, of the veteran concept, right? And also him as a blender, Is there? there's another veteran involved as well? Uh, his father. His father, that's right, his father. And there's yeah. a lot of the employees there too. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the employees. That's pretty cool. So you guys spent some time out there in Nicaragua? Yep, and so we, we, we went down there with Dave, and we brought, uh, you know, we brought our current cigars down there. And we told the factory, hey, we like the taste of these. Yeah. We want you to duplicate the taste, uh, make the construction better. And one thing Placencia does is they draw test every single cigar that's made. And can you explain what a draw test is for the listeners that don't know what that is? Yeah. So, so, yeah. S- there you go. <laughs> so, so a draw is essentially how much airflow there is through the cigar. If a cigar is not consistently made, you'll have a tight packed cigar. You won't be able to draw as much air through it. And so with Placencia, when they put it in the draw test machine, they don't have the cap on the cigar yet. And, you know, or they, the wrapper. It, yeah. It, well, it's rolled. So the cap so the cap is the back end that you have to cut before you smoke anyways. You right. understand? And so it won't have that. So it's pretty much a free-flowing cigar with just the sides and the open ends. And what they're doing is they're lighting it. Or they're not lighting it, right? No. They're just pushing the air through. Yeah, they just oh, put yeah, it in the machine. suction machine, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a suction you machine. You put your fingers in it. Yeah. You yeah. put something else in it, but that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So and then and then it has to read between a certain you know per, you know a range right. of acceptability thirty eight and forty psi right so it draws the air through it and it'll tell you where it's drawing at and if, and if it's too hard I mean no one's gonna want to smoke that damn cigar right because you're just sucking the, it's like a, a milkshake a fresh milkshake from In and Out you know things suck yeah so 
And so, so now they're one hundred percent draw tested, which is awesome. So, if the ones that don't pass draw tests, so they get the they get recycled. The, the workers get them, and then they they're the ones that take it home and smoke them like a bad I pizza. Think they, I think they get cut, no, cut they, apart, and re rolled. So. Yeah, they get sent back to that same roller, and they re roll them, and then they get tested again. Nice. And that's the beauty of all of the rollers that are on the floor. When you walk through the factory, um, there's three different rolling floors, and each floor. Um, has separate people who are rolling different sizes and shapes and making sure that way to go Scott party foul Scott uh, yes, if you guys are listening uh, Scott's phone goes off because he's so damn important nice ringtone Scott <laughs> <laughs> can't even change a ringtone that's the original ringtone but, but they, they make sure that every cigar is perfect and so if there's an issue with the cigar it goes back to that same roller it's exactly, and, and, yeah, and that's, that's and just a testament that. That's a testament to how quality uh, the Placencia family is and, and how quality the new Warfighter tobacco cigars will be coming in. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, so there's all these different blends now. There's six different blends. If you guys don't know this, Warfighter tobacco has six different blends. There's three that are the Garrison, seven different blends. Oh! You better, like, you better just let George tell No, 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 because I know, I know what the seven is. I know what the seventh is, and it's a very special one. Is that the one we're talking about? The seventh, yeah. Okay, so you got the three that are the garrison, and so those that are those that are wondering the garrison in the military, a garrison is more of like um, your 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 dress you're your dress mask, yep. right? Yeah, what in the rear? In in the rear. You're, you're, you're not in the field. You're you're. Damn it, uh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> not this in the rear. Family show, this Scott. Is a family show, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> no, so your garrison is pretty much when you're not deployed. You're you're home. You're in your unit. Um, you usually are have more of your ceremonial appearance, your dress right, dress, nice, and your, your blues. You're your, looking proper. All right, it's just your garrison. You're home, you're not going to war yet, right? So in that, they have three different three different blends there. You got your 5.56, five, your 7.62, and your 50 cal. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into depth on what they are because uh, I, you guys can look it up online. We'll, we'll give you more explanation for it, but all of them are amazing. My favorite is uh, the 7.62, That out of that one. So uh, I do. we do need to let the people know so up until this point the field and garrison like the 556 field 556 garrison have been the same blend when the new ones come from nicaragua we're adding three new blends so the garrisons will be brand new cigars yeah three different this would be six completely different blends yeah go ahead what was that one you gave me the other day Huh. Oh, that was a 762. Yeah, it was amazing. It yeah. was like one of the, and we, and we, and we had to shut it off <laughs> early. Yeah, we had to shut it off. And I was like, well, give me like give me a couple minutes, you know? <laughs> yeah, because we were out there filming right. and then I had to smoke a cigar and I gave him one and he was like, Man, what is that? I was like, dude, it's a 762, it's one of my favorite ones. And then so and then we got cut short. He had to cut it out short. And I was like, Man, I'm sorry, dude. And then we went outside to find it. It was a windy day, the wind blew <laughs> oh, it, dude. Oh, that sucks. I was a little upset by that. I was like, I need to find another one yeah. of those. And so the other three that you have is your field ones. You know, and your field, if you guys Again, not familiar with the military terms. Your field is when you're out there training or overseas, right? It's it's kind of when your your boots on the ground. You're actually doing the work. So those are your field version. And uh, and again, you have your five five six, your seven six two, and your fifty cal. Different complete blends from the first three. And so when you guys get a chance, if you guys like a Maduro, like a, a darker blend, those fifty cal's are, are my favorite. Um, I, I for some reason are, are, if I can smoke those I smoke those more often but those give me a little bit of a buzz dude right, right. Then, like like that's kind of what I, I like it though because I'm like man this is really strong <laughs> yeah so something I've learned about cigars and uh, I'm still learning every day about about cigars and different things but there's a a rate of how fast they burn right a, a, a burn time correct and what's a right. good average burn time for smoking a cigar I'm talking sitting there hanging with the boys. That's kind of dictated by the size of the cigar. Okay. So size, yeah, ring gauge and length. Yeah. So so we're adding some new sizes, okay. and one of those sizes happens to be the Rocco. Oh yeah. Yeah. So How about that? yeah. Uh, that's going to be our six by sixty, the biggest cigar we make. Yeah, I like that. Is uh, that the fluctuating size? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're an asshole, sir. You're a dick. Oh man, that hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, so we plan on doing the Rocco. It's a really big cigar. What What is the burn time on that? So that's probably an hour 45. You got to be kidding me. Imagine two hours of smoking a cigar. I could do it. All yeah. the time. <laughs> Unless you're John, then yeah. it's like 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and then the smallest is like a Robusto, and it's probably a... You know, a forty-five minute smoke. Which, what, what's an average smoke on on ours? The ones that we have right now. So, like, like a Churchill, you're you're probably looking about an hour fifteen. Nice, nice, that's good. And and, and let's hear about the the last one, the new blend. It's called the Victory. Yeah, the Victory. So, uh, when I was down in Placencia, we we were blending, and I pretty much told Dave 
Blanco, our blender, I said, hey, I want something that not everybody's doing. I want the most premium cigar I can get. I don't care what the price is. Right. I want something that changes flavors throughout the cigar. Yes. That's just, you know, an awesome cigar. And I don't care what, I don't care what it costs. Right. And so we did a Montefina wrapper, uh, and it, it literally, as you smoke the cigar, will change flavors three or four times. Dude. Uh, it's an excellent cigar. But there you now, this cigar is hands down my favorite, favorite one. This is the one I, I've been put, making polls and like, ask them about the secret cigar. Ask them about it. And so they're going up to you guys, right? They were at, uh, where it's were you guys at? It's yeah, yeah, we don't have them yet. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> you, were, you, were, you, were, you were giving it away. So I didn't want to like say, but I want to excite people because it's seriously, it is hands down i'm talking it you it can compete with any cigar out there in the market as a great great high quality cigar yeah we were up in sturgis and we had guys coming up to the booth and they're like hey rocco put that post up what's the special cigar you guys have <laughs> and we're, we didn't see it and we're you know because we were super yeah. busy and we're like oh, what are you talking about like <laughs> what's special we have two sturgis blends that we have like I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you just burn. Dude, I've, so I've, I've managed to be able to smoke three of those cigars so far. And every time I have one, I think they're the... Dude, they're just the best. Yeah. They're so good. I mean, the name itself, Victory Cigars. I just love them. I think. There, there, there's actually only 11 people in the world right now that have smoked a Victory. One of them is a guy that was down at the factory when we were blending it. He's a Canadian guy. And he's, he's just a big cigar fan. And he's a tourist, but he's a friend of another cigar company yeah he hits us up probably weekly yeah begging for the cigar he's waiting for him yeah. to come out yeah. yeah and you know it's one of those he's like oh, i'll wrap it up in canada for you guys i mean it we actually had another cigar factory owner compare the victory to the opus x and, and explain and, people that are listening with the opus x is a very high-end top shelf cigar um that is gonna end what it's probably two and a half times the cost of a victory mm, it, it's i don't maybe a little bit more maybe, yeah maybe uh 50 more or something it, it, it would what would it cost for one of those sticks those opus ones you were saying forty dollars for one seven somewhere yeah. in there depending upon it's, where you it, go it depends on the size and yeah, yeah so that's 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 yeah. huge that's yeah a, so yeah. that, that leads us to the uh you know what's the price of the victory going to be and we thought an appropriate price would be 1776 because that's the price of freedom uh, <laughs> boom fuck you bitch <laughs> no tax i love that dude that's fucking rad so. dude the cigars are well worth that it, it tastes amazing i'm excited for that one to come out and when you're thinking uh this show might come out by in a week from now so so we're hoping no later than two weeks after the show comes out we'll have have them on the website so ready we're thinking to order mid-october to late october Nice, and it's called the Victory Cigar, correct? Yep, and that's when all the new blends will be here. That's so. All the new blends. All the new. Well, blends. that's exciting. That's exciting. So all the new blends. So all the old, uh, whatever, all the old cigars will be out, and all the new ones are in. Or it's going to take whatever's, probably whatever's left in inventory. We'll put them up, and you'll be able to tell the difference on the website. Okay, awesome. Uh, but yeah, we'll clear them out. So cool. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Still, what are your questions about cigars? Are you? Do you wear a smoker's jacket? Are you supposed to wear a smoker's jacket? Uh, <laughs> you know, the, we, really we went and looked at them. We went and looked at them. <laughs> Those things are like they're like uh, like little pimp suits. Yeah, yeah, they're like little pimp suits. Well, it looks like a Hugh Hefner jacket. That's yeah. what it is. It's yeah, like, they're crazy. They had this vendor that was at uh, IPCPR. Rest in peace. And um, and they had these awesome smoke jackets, but they were no, like dude, a thousand bucks a these piece. These smoke jackets. They make these smoke jackets make look like whoobies. Some. Yeah. And so they customize them to you. Oh yeah, there there's a huge market for them. Like it's huge, bro. You know how much one of those costs? It was somewhere around three to four hundred. Yeah, they started around four hundred bucks. Yeah, something right. Like that. Yeah, that's crazy. And then dude. people are gonna look at you when you're in the club, and because the, they have those smokers clubs, right? And you're right. walking, <laughs> in, you're walking over a four hundred dollar jacket, and they judge like, you. So, hmm. so this is where He's Warfighter's a little out. bit different than the other brands. <laughs> yeah, because we don't have to fit the stereotype. Yeah, no, yeah, most of them. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, you want to find see. us in the club with our pants on. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Just a smokers jacket. That's it. It's yeah. like, like, oh, those guys on that other cigar company. Look at those nice suits, and like, those are that's Warfighter tobacco back over there <laughs> they don't even have their pants on at the moment <laughs> well, I, I think that was the funny part about the ipcpr show is we actually walk in to all of it and we're all you know camo hats yeah. and t-shirts and jeans yeah average guys yeah, and then you look across the room and there's guys in three-piece suits. suits oh yeah yeah and oh, no. everybody's like, looks like a bunch of executives yeah. the coolest thing is the people there were, were they would come up and they'd have a longer and more intimate conversation with you than they would at any other table they just stop and be like because you felt like they were like you were a normal person well that's, dude one guy was like hey man 
you're veterans, right? And like, yeah, he's like, dude, so was I, man. I'm like, all right, dude. And he's like, hey, man, listen. And he just started talking and talking. And then we had a video playing, and the video was looping, and it had like all these cool like missions and stuff. And eventually, you start really making connection there. I was like, let's go get beers later. Let's go, you know, like, what's up? And so that's kind of what this kind of creates, right? And I think that's why the significance of Warfire Tobacco and why it's different, right? But you guys won Best in Show, didn't you? Best in show for for new new exhibitor new exhibitor, new exhibitor. okay yeah. I mean, still you got it I, there's also a rumor that we won best party um, yeah <laughs> I, but it's that's not really great not talking about yeah that. I don't know yeah I don't know who judges that one. <laughs> I seen the uh, Snapchat post I follow Warfighter I'm gonna tell you Instagram, right now and I I seen some of the I left early stories. <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's make the record clear I left early and Chrissy was with me the whole time. <laughs> Oh, man, it was a good time, man. And the crazy thing about smoking cigars, uh, we got to smoke so many different cigars that night. Uh, it's those four nights, I think it was. And, you know, it's just something about the culture of smoking cigars. It's it's a cool, it's just different, right? It's not a smoking world. I mean, it's not like a drinking world. It's, it's a different feel. You sit there, you have good conversation, you enjoy the time it takes for that cigar to go down. It's, you almost hope the cigar doesn't go down as fast as it does. And, and, and you just enjoy it. Right. Well, yeah. another thing is is that you got you got cigars that you're gonna you're gonna drink some scotch with or some bourbon or some or, bourbon. Or so some... what? I mean, what do you guys prefer to smoke your to nice. drink with your cigars? Yeah, let's share. Let's go one at a time, Scott. Well, I mean, uh, I'm you know the Jameson 18 years yes. probably my go to. That's a great, great. Yeah. Great one. So a Jameson 18 and a Victory. There's probably nothing better in the world. Oh, the guy. Yeah. Yeah. John. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't disagree with that. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, John. Um, what, what's your number two then? My number. I I just like regular Jameson too. Um, yeah, John. John. John drinks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, John, your glass is empty like right now. Whiskey. I know you guys are slow. I'm you can pour another one if you want. Like yeah. half of these are empty because Steel already finished them. But hey, at least I got somebody on my page. There you go, <laughs> oh boy, dude. There's plenty of bottles. Grab any bottle you want. Look at crack open that rye. I'll, I'll grab it right now for him so they can see it in time. Crack, crack the rye. That rye is really good. Yeah. So yeah. Um, um, this year, this year, how about you, uh, George? What would what would your choice be? Shirley uh, Temple. <laughs> you get a blended Bob margarita, Mark. please. With a, a blended margarita with an umbrella, please. Everything. Everything, yeah. George, yeah. George, George likes it. You know, I, I think it, that's the thing that I love about cigars yeah. is the fact that you can sit down, and I don't care who you are, right. where you come from, what your background is, what you do for work. If you sit down and start smoking a cigar, you have something to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And that's the great thing about a cigar is that it brings people together because you're like, oh, hey, let's talk about the taste of this cigar and, you know, where it's blended and, oh, hey, have you been there? Have you done this? And... It brings everybody together as a community, and well, that's the great aspect. And of it brings it brings you back to a place where you remember a time that you were there. You know, so I don't know how many times that you know I, I'll be out and about doing an event or something, yeah. and somebody will say, "Oh, my grandpa used to smoke cigars," and uh, it just brings me back to that memory. And- no, it does. It does. You know, what's funny is I remember I wasn't I wasn't a big smoker, <clears throat> and uh, my second plane was in is was in Iraq. And we had some really cool. I'd say cool because no one got hurt. Well, you know what I mean. Right. It was it was a it was a scary deployment, but we had engagement. There was action. You you didn't just train for six months and show up and nothing happened. Right, right. right. We went there and did our job, and uh, it was a heavy, heavy deployment where we were just constantly doing mission after mission after mission, which was great. But then when you had that break time, you had that time to just sit there and relax with the boys and kind of reflect on like. Holy shit! Did they really just throw grenades at us, right? You yeah, know, yeah. Or, or you know what I mean? One of those moments, and you sit there and you smoke your little cigar. So we were able to get those little, those little c- cigaritos or whatever they were, those small ones. The cigarillos. <laughs> whatever they're called. The cloves. Yeah. <laughs> we got the them hipsters. from the bazaar, so I don't know what was in them. It's a haji special, right? Right. There. Exactly. Yeah. So whatever it was, we were able to sit there, talk about the mission. Um, and, and just kind of laugh about it. And then also just kind of kind of give that thanks that like, man, everyone's good and safe. You know, it was another crazy mission. Fuck, this is what we do for a living. You know what I mean? Like all these little re- reflecting on the night and it's fucking great. And every time I smoke a cigar, it brings me back to that deployment. It just does. That's that's my moment where I remember waking up, I'd make myself some black coffee, I'd have uh, some graham crackers and some blueberry jam that someone sent to a Vince Vargas that wasn't me, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, motherfucker, it's mine now. <laughs> And so that was my breakfast, and then my evening snack would be, you know, after a mission, we'd be able to smoke a cigar or something and just bullshit, man. And so it was great. It's a great feeling. Yeah, one of the, uh, in the booth that we had at IPCPR, one of the pictures on there is actually one of our guys in Iraq, uh, oh, Lucas nice. Goddard. And uh, we had this crazy long mission, following after following. We were out for like two, three days. 
and uh, straight. yeah, straight nonstop. It yeah. was nuts. Uh, so we crashed out, uh, woke up because we had guards guarding our compound. Yeah. And uh, so it was him and I on, on a guard shift, and I grabbed a couple of Cubans. Well, they're probably fake, but whatever. Yeah, they say they were Cubans, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and act like they were yeah, Cubans. I mean, they were delicious. <laughs> they, yeah. But so we're sitting up on this rooftop with a 240 in front of us, a couple of rocket launchers and all this stuff. And we're sweating our asses off. It's like 140 degrees out, and we're yeah. ripping, cu- uh, ripping Cubans, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I got my shitty little disposable camera because in 03, that's all we had. And, uh, and I just look over and snap a picture of him real quick. And, and that's we the picture up. we had up there. Yeah, and it's on the side of our trailer, too. Nice. Yeah, it ended up working out pretty well. It's crazy, man. So let me ask you this. This, this is the big question. If there was one celebrity you'd want to drink a drink some whiskey with <laughs> or scotch and smoke a cigar, a victory cigar, we'll say, who would that be? You know, uh, we had a guest speaker at uh, the IPCPR, yeah. and it was uh, Rudy Giuliani. Oh. And he's a big cigar guy. And after hearing him talk, he's that speech, he's probably the he's probably the one I'd like to sit down and have a cigar. With. I think it's just for the listeners. And Giuliani was was the mayor during the time of nine eleven, um, and and the way he approached this scenario was amazing. Mayor Giuliani had had such such command, right? And 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 the, when he was on stage talking, he had humor. His story was compelling. He was very educated and, and just perfect for for just to hear him. I would go somewhere to speak, hear him speak again. That's, yes, absolutely. That's, he was inspiring, brilliant. motivating, just brilliant. And and I just loved his his candor and as well as his his brutal honesty. Yeah. And it was great. Man. Yeah. And I think at a time like the the people that tend to support the smoking community was just like I, I don't know, man. For some reason, I I don't think you could have got a better speaker that day. And, and the the one thing about being a retired Republican yeah. mayor yeah. of New yeah. York is you don't care anymore. Yeah. He said what was on his mind, and he there was no filter, no yeah. edit button. There's, there was no political agenda there. He yeah. just said what was on his mind and how he felt legit. Well, he's done a lot of things in his life Dude, as well. A lot of different, a lot of, a lot of good things. That guy, man, lawyer, things like that. Not even that. that not but, even that. What he did for the crime rates in New York. And what he also did during 9-11, too, was amazing. He brought not even, not just a city together. He, he brought an entire country together I agree. at that moment. I yeah. agree. And and then, you, you look at it from the aspect of... of you know what he was doing before 9-11 happened and nothing like that's ever happened before no and he took total control you know great super super cool dude and that dude that was a great one scott and uh, it's hard to trump that one i don't know who's gonna who's gonna beat that so we're doing dead or alive i don't care doesn't matter let's go dude let's go both one of each let's get dude it's your cigar well uh so um Oh shit! I don't know. Oh, John, is, tough, John is nervous. Give me one. You had all day to think about this. John. Yeah, all day. You guys. John, I text you. I text you eight in the morning. I said, "Look, I'm gonna ask this one fucking question. Well, don't fuck have, this hey, up. We had a really busy day today. <laughs> it's an hour long show. A little don't bed, bath, fuck and it beyond. up. Any Home Depot if we got time. So let's hear it. What do you got? Um, uh, let's see. So dead. I probably have to go. I don't know. Hugh Hefner would be a fun one. Hugh Hefner would be a good one. I think uh, that would be a good one. But he was a he fight. He just passed away, too. I know. You know, the cool thing about that Hugh is that people don't realize like, he was a veteran. Yes, yeah, he was. Yep. He served. Man. And, and that's, to me, like... I'd just like to talk to him to see him. And like, you know, when you started everything that you started and where you're at now, like, dude, tell me your story. Yeah, you know? no, like, I, I the agree. The no bullshit I bet, part of it. I bet, the, I bet the story outside of all the all the playboys and, and the girls and all that stuff, I bet the story itself is just yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, because, I, I don't want to hear about what he did. Who, who could have done that? Like, who could have done that? Like, yeah, seriously. Done, this guy was a veteran at one point, gets out and decides to, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I want to take pictures of naked women and show everybody. Surrounded by women. And which well, people can say whatever the, uh, their opinions on Hugh Hefner is, a womanizer, whatever the heck you want to say he is, right? Like, but the fact is, this guy made something from zero to something. Well, and, he started in the '60s too, right? In, in an era where you know nudity wasn't, you know, the kind of accepted. Bad, right. It wasn't yeah. accepted. Right. Yeah. And so, so I just, I just, I always respect anyone who's been able to kind of. Man, the guy was like an iconic figure, you know. And so that, to me, in itself, is just. Well, think huge. about how many people, some, how many young men or grown men's life goals is go to the go we, to Playboy Mansion. We've all ha- we all have our story oh. with our path with the Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So we all have a story, okay? Right. Any guy that can wear a robe for the last 40 years of his life and is socially acceptable, like, yeah. he's good in my book. He's, d- he's done good. He's done good. George? Wow. Um, probably two different people that I'd have to choose oh, from. Oh, you're cheating. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I want to hear it. I want to hear so it. Who's number one? One oh. would actually be my grandfather. That's, dude, I was hoping you were going to say that, but I didn't want to be the guy like, I didn't want to know that George Patton is well, actually no, so, well, no, no, no. I, that's, that's different. So my grandfather actually passed away when I was... Like seven. We've talked about your grandfather. And 
brilliant man. Yeah. Super intelligent. Yeah. But he's a farmer. Um, so hard working American. Yeah. Dude. You know, my grandparents were like, especially my grandmother was like the person I really looked up to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other person, and I don't talk about a whole lot, um, would probably be General Patton. There you go. Um, General Patton. Just because. Still. That would be amazing to actually sit down and talk to the guy. You know what his last name is? I know. I was just going to ask, is that a natural relation? Or? It is. It is. It is. And which is amazing for, for guys like me, veterans, right, who, who who just, we've heard the stories, we've read the stories, we know the history lessons, and, and to know, like, you know, that's that's someone in your lineage, which is great, but that would also be, what an awesome time to be like, hey, we're actually related. Let's right. Let's talk. So that, because <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I think that the, the bottom line for him, um, and the reason I would actually, I, I'd want to sit down with my grandfather because yeah. I miss my grandfather, right. and I never really get to know him because he passed away when I was so young. And that'd be a great cigar session. Oh, that'd my be God. a great session. Yeah, it'd be amazing. You'd have to light a second one like John. Yeah. You're lighting the second one with the first one, yeah. right? <laughs> I have not ever done that. No. No. Back to back. Yeah. I think hey, the, after this the, session, we're going to go smoke cigars. Right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, good. We'll you just can't smoke in the house. That's why we're not doing it right not, now. Not in the house, yeah. <laughs> the idea of actually sitting down and smoking with Journal Patton would be just mind-numbing. Right. That the, the his belief system and I mean again it was one of those things growing up you'd get stories from you know like my grandmother and yeah. some other yeah. other family members and most of it was like what yeah really that happened and yeah Crazy. no really and so yeah it'd be, it'd be pretty intense to actually hear it from his so, point of view so just so everybody else knows who who was General Patton to you yes um, he was my great great uncle great great uncle. That's still a pretty close lineage right there. Dude, that's pretty wild, right? <laughs> yeah. well, one, yeah. of my, one of my favorite pictures is a uh, is a Patton picture is when his dog, when the day that he died and his dog is laying there next, yeah. to, his, uh, next to his suitcase yeah. and things like yeah. that. I mean, just to have such an impact on so many people, but have an impact on your own dog. Yeah. You know, that... Yeah, that's huge. It's a big deal. Yeah. I think one of the greatest conversations that they'd have, though, is... Uh, is General Patton asking why George joined the Marines? I can tell you. I can tell you right now why I joined the Marines. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, as an enlisted uh, guy, no, you know what we, it was. We, we weren't going to go there, but let's. Yeah, do it. no, I mean, yeah, you want to go there, you know, be that guy. He loved crayons. Well, <laughs> they are delicious. Crayons. <laughs> crayons and paste. Purple paste. No, uh, my dad was actually a mass sergeant in the army. Nice. And obviously, my family is very military, hardcore. My my dad was basically like a drill instructor, drill right. sergeant. Um, and that was one of those things growing up was like you'll never make it in the army, you know, because he yeah. always. So let me prove to you something. Yeah. About, so yeah. yeah, I went into the Marines and said, "Oh, right, go fuck yourself." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things. So, you know? we, we, go, we all go through that phase. Yeah. That was yeah. your rebellion towards your father yeah. and your other, other people saying it to Dude, you. So still, your turn. Dude, mine, mine until, I, until I meet the guy, Bo Jackson, all the time. Dude, that's oh. cool. Yeah. <laughs> until yeah. until the day... He's a huge Bo Jackson fan. Until the day I get to meet Bo Jackson, it'll be somebody else. What, what is it about Bo Jackson? I just, I just, it's the reason I got into sports. It's the reason I started loving football, baseball, playing sports, be, get, got into you know, got into this athletics and things like that. Wanted to be an athlete. The craziest thing about Bo Jackson to me is like, dude, if he got that injury 10 years later, he'd be good. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he'd be back. He'd like be he, out one season and come right back, right? It's just like, he, he dislocated his hip socket pretty much. He destroyed his hip socket. And then years later, that's not an uncommon surgery to have, right? Uh, like, it, it's probably hard to come back from that and actually be as good as he is. But, I mean, it was a completely, it was a stop all. Well, yeah, well, what happened was is that there was the blood was leaking inside that joint, the hip socket. Yeah. And so that's what kind of caused it to deteriorate and stuff like that. Crazy. But, you know, when he got the replacement hip, the first first at bat, he had a home run. Like, you know, <laughs> it's just crazy things. He's just got these crazy stories. That's just cool. Dude, but, but, yeah, Bo Jack is cool. Man, you know what's funny? I've been sitting here this whole time. And, and I, you can't know. I, you have, know I have no idea. I'm sitting here trying to have a conversation. I thought you would have one for sure. No, yeah, not, you can't give me shit about it. Like, no, oh, no, no, no. I'm like, yeah, I'm giving you shit question. while I'm thinking. I, I told you, we gave you told you this all day long. You had plenty of time to. I'm think. like, John, you're an asshole. You don't know. I'm like, fuck. Who the fuck am I gonna pick? That's the one. That's the um, picture. it's interesting to me. Like, there's so many people out there that I would love to sit down and have a cool conversation with. I think just personally, just from my own life, 
uh, uh, Fernando Valenzuela would be a big epic one for me because of the baseball side, because of the Latin side, because um, what he did for baseball at that time in L.A., being in L.A. as well. I grew up in Los Angeles, California, in the area of Los Angeles, California. I actually grew up in San Fernando Valley. But Fernando Valenzuela was the big first superstar baseball player that was a Mexican-American. And so for me growing up, it was just kind of, that was my Michael Jordan. right? That was my Magic Johnson. That was just the dude. And uh, the craziest thing in life is I actually played junior college baseball with his son. And uh, so, like, when that happened, I was like, that's not really Fernando Valenzuela Jr., is it? He's like, it is. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, is this kid's dad ever going to show up? And he shows up and sits next to my father. Uh, right? And my dad's like, holy fuck, it's Fernando Valenzuela. <laughs> <laughs> did your dad do that look like at point over? No, right? no, like, my dad is super, like, he will never fucking show excitement, right? So he's just like, give us up. <laughs> <laughs> so they start talking and bullshitting and stuff. And, and then later, someone's like, how was he? He goes, dude. Fucking cool, you know, like, like, dude, that's Fernando. What do you mean? How was it? It was yeah. like one of the best days of yeah, my life. Ex- exactly, it's one of the most iconic dudes in LA, and being being a Latin American. Well, guy. it was a revolution back. Then. I mean, it not was. like a revolution, but it was a. It know. was the first of now many to come. Yeah, like back in the day, there wasn't very many Latin Americans playing baseball, and and they were famous. I mean, Roberto Clemente was one of the big ones. Yeah, and they got taken away pretty early. Early, he he died in a plane crash. Yeah. And and so so the crazy thing is Roberto Clemente I believe he was Puerto Rican wasn't he Yeah no he was actually headed to a relief mission I believe, in Panama yeah, in, right Yeah during the was crash it, No yeah. I think it was Was it in Puerto Rico It was I think it was Puerto Rico yeah, so, I think it was Puerto Rico yeah. and it's crazy my father's Puerto Rican so they I overloaded just, the plane and yeah, you know crazy. and he paid for everything on, on that Right and oh, so, so and then you got Fernando Valenzuela and somewhere in the 80s and it was just like a really great time and so for me like I said, growing up in the area, being a Dodgers fan, and all of a sudden this dude showing up, and then now seeing Major League Baseball and how there's a huge influx of Latin American ball players, right? And so it's really cool to see that he was kind of the guy. He was, I guess, for the Latin community, and not let's not say there wasn't this big of, a, of an issue, but like when when Jackie Robinson came in, he he changed the game because now African Americans could play baseball now, which made the game better, right? You had a more competitive field, and that also opened up the door for Guys like Roberto Clemente, who was Puerto Rican, but looked black, right? And so it was a big deal for, like, Puerto Ricans, too. That, that's the right. other side of my, my, my family. And so when that changed the game, then you start having more Mexican-Americans showing up, and then, boom, Fernando Valenzuela. So if I could sit down and have a cigar with Fernando Valenzuela, I think that would be one of the most epic, epic nights. Well, right. you seen the, like, you ever seen the, the town he's from in Mexico? Yeah. It's, like, f- maybe 400 people. Dude, like, that, guy, maybe. that guy was still playing baseball in Mexico? In his fifties, yeah, throwing right. screwballs. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the love of the game. Wild man, hey man. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up the show for tonight. You guys, anything you guys want to add, man? Anything you guys want to talk about? If you guys have anything coming up here in the next two weeks, because this won't be going out till next week sometime. So any two weeks, anything for Warfare Tobacco? Not even that. Uh, you have a business as well, several businesses and whatnot. You guys, give us shout outs now. Let's let's throw them out there. Um, we could tag however we want later on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know, the, for uh, Warfighter, when this airs, we'll just be getting back from uh, the Vegas Bike Week. Um, you know, it's we're heading up there this week. It's the day after the the big shooting, yeah. and so um, you know, that's I don't know what the mood's going to be like up there, but you know, it's uh, it's tough, man. It's that's, tough. That's, it's it's tough. a tough time right now. You know, you guys are going to go up there for for a good thing and ha- try and have a good time, but it's hard when knowing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, innocent victims out there that are suffering. And so, you know, we're going to do our, our best. We, we've been sending the Drink It Bros uh, Vegas chapter out there. Everyone's donating as much blood as possible. Right. You guys that are listening still, anytime this even comes out still, if you have a chance to donate blood, please donate blood because, man, things like this, is that's when you need it, right? And, and You can wish, you can pray, you can do everything you want, but until you actually take action, do something to help, uh, that's what's more meaningful and actually helps everyone out there. Right. Take care of your own. Yeah, yeah it's crazy, man. So, yeah. yeah. Anything else? I got to stop drinking for a day or two before I get blood. Just to- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to stop getting tattoos for about five years before oh, I can get oh, blood. That's that. the problem. That's the reason why I can't oh. donate blood is because of the tattoos. What's the time limit on it's that? A, it's so far, the last time I went, it was a five-year gap. I'm Fuck. like, that's not going to happen. Even yeah, one year doesn't tough. happen. So I just got some tough. little bit now. Yeah. It's tough. George, anything you want to add? I'm no? pretty good right now. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> he's, good. he's like, eh, this is rising he's, he's, a little bit. He's excited to go out there and smoke a cigar. Yeah. George is deep into the whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. No, George can actually drink a lot more than I can. George is not. Hey, for, George for is, a little guy. Yeah, George yeah. is not half my size, but he can still drink twice as much as I you can. You guys all give me crap about how much I drink. And well, when George and I get together, oh, man. We were in Vegas. <laughs> we were in Vegas for how many days? Was that five I, days in Vegas? Yeah. I guess okay, that I makes me a lightweight. Yeah. Oh, no, we were there 11 days. 
Dude, we were there in Actually, Vegas so long, bro. Like I was like, I got sick of it. I, I got, like, I got w- one little funny story before we go. It's and it's about, about <laughs> us drinking together. Uh-oh. So Scott, Uh-oh. Scott, George, and I went out to uh, Colorado for the Drinking Bros live show. Oh, yeah. That's what we did. We did the uh, Freedom Fest. Yeah, the, yes. No, 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 no. Not the Freedom Fest. The live podcast. Oh, our oh, live, live podcast. Yeah. Oh, shit. That was a mess. So we go out there. <laughs> oh, <and> dude. <laughs> this is a good story. Dude. Christy was like. I didn't, the, I didn't even recognize him. They were so fucking drunk. <laughs> so I don't want to talk about the pictures that were on my phone. Like the next day of Scott, oh, me, and Matt. Oh shit! That's Scott's true. over there singing the national anthem of JT. <laughs> Doesn't remember any of it. I have no recollection of that until John showed me the video. Dude, these dudes are in a bar smoking cigars inside. Yeah, they got kicked, like, so you can't getting smoke kicked in out here. and they come right back in and doing it again, dude. They're holding cigar under the table, dude. I'm like, is there still a cigar in here, dude? So, okay, so so. Let me, let me let me set the stage of, of how everybody got there. Um, so we're in the the live show. Um, back up back up like three hours. Bro. Okay, so we go to Top yeah. Golf. <laughs> yeah, we started at Top Golf. I did with, not know with that. Double Jameson so, and for and like the, three and, hours. And we're from Nebraska and we're in the mountains and the elevation had to play a. Play. <laughs> oh, the, you <laughs> got to throw the elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Nebraska is the flattest state in the nation, two percent each way. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I can flip a five gallon bucket upside down, stand on it, and see the other side of the state. It's crazy. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so we go to Top Golf and, and we get some lunch, which really didn't consist of much food and a whole lot of whiskey. Uh, and then we decide, hey, this is a good idea. Let's go to the, the live show now. Uh, so we show up to the live show um, and we get there a little early. We're sitting outside. We're bullshitting with all the guys that are in line, you know, passing out cigars, smoking, having a you know, great time. Uh, yeah. And then they let us inside. And we go to the bar and they're like, hey, just start a tab. And we got a waitress. We'll send them to where you guys are sitting. Yeah. And we're like, oh. Okay. That was a bad thing. <laughs> bad thing. And so, like, Dude. we all drink about the same amount. Yeah. Like, Scott and I can go out any day of the week, and we have our limits. We go very through about similar, any very more similar, than three yeah. quarters of a bottle of Jameson, and it's, tomorrow's going to suck. Gee, um, oh my, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it usually doesn't happen like that that yeah. often. Well, yeah. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir, are a liar. And yeah, every time I see the week. them. Yeah, during the week. And then yeah. George is right there with us. Yeah. Um, and so, we, we get into the live show, and... You know, we had a couple drinks before the show started, and then they start bringing drinks over, and then yeah. Scott and George are trying to pour strike force in each other's drinks and slamming them. So well, I mean, it was actually kept, pretty good. Kept doing, I'll race you to the bottom, and the guy would bring over <laughs> and a so, full <laughs> cup, and then he'd pick up his glass and be like, "I race you to the bottom." I'm like, "Okay, let's do this." And, so, and the guy would stand there and be like, two more." Did you, like, just, well, did you yeah. just double dog air me? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> and so Scott and George are sitting in front of me, like right on the, like the little table area, and I'm sitting um, with one of the guys that got the tattoos on yeah. the first night. Or no, the second. Oh, yeah. John Irby. Yeah, yeah John yeah, Irby. Yeah, yeah. That's with him one of my soldiers, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and so I see them. Fucking nut, dude. So I, I love see them him. racing, and I'm like, well, I can't let them lap me, you know? Yeah. So I'm just sitting in the back, just pounding drinks. John's like, what the fuck? <laughs> bro. And uh, so the show gets over, and we're even on the number of drinks that we have, right? So yeah. we go upstairs. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go smoke. You know, a whole bunch of dudes want to go smoke with us in the patio. So I'm out there, hand out a bunch of cigars to the guys. We're smoking, you know, bullshit. I don't even get through the first, the first third of my cigar. Um, and I was like, I'm going to go check on the guys. Like, I haven't seen them in a minute. You know what I mean? So I'm a little nervous. Back, I walk back inside, and I see him, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what? how did, where, how did you guys get to here? And I'm not there yet. So that's the time I already got there, right? I went to go <laughs> yeah. sit down with Christy, and, and, they and then fuck- <laughs> they showed up, and I'm like, <laughs> like, dude, are they all right? Dude, they were Fox, like, like, like bro. We just spent. Room, we or? just spent. No, we, we went up the so the the. No, it was a fucking. It was, a, it was a restaurant right above the venue. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Dude, and so we just spent fucking seven days, eight days in Vegas together, right? And I've seen them drinking and everything and had a good time. Dude, we were up late <laughs> as fuck a couple yeah. nights, and then here. Weeks later, at the live event, these dudes are fucking out of it, bro. <laughs> and Christy knew these guys really well because she got to hang out with them there, something like that, right? Or might no, 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 this is the first time. This yeah, is the first time. This is the first time they met Christy. Time they met Christy. Like, yeah, and they were, fu- and I was like, well, that's uh, that's George. <laughs> and, yeah. Half cocked, yeah. Size yeah. And I was like, and that's, uh, that's Scott. Dude. I had a slight buzz, okay. dude. In the fucking smoking cigar, in the fucking thing. And I'm ordering appetizers for everyone to eat, dude, just because it was just, they were fucked. They got to eat. So, so eat. the next night we go to Colorado Springs for another event. <laughs> <laughs> and I introduced, or I said hi to Christy and introduced myself. She's like, yeah, we met last night. I'm like, yeah, that wasn't really me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, dude, so he introduced himself again to Christy and so, dude, never remembered the first so meeting. We wake up the next morning and, uh, we got we Ubered it back to the hotel because we're you know responsible yeah. alcoholics. Yeah, good job. Um, Always. I mean, drunk. Sorry, we don't go to meetings. But um, yeah. 
And so uh, Scott's going through his emails, and I guess we blew off an Uber driver, so we and he charged us for it, and didn't even give us a ride. Charged us for the whole thing, and then we and I had a perfect five star rating until then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so I start looking at my phone, and I'm like, "Hey, do you guys remember these?" They're like, "No, no." So from like about nine forty five at night, and we closed the bar down. Yeah, they don't remember shit. <laughs> they got pictures of them, like the hangover. Like you're oh, just awesome. No, I, I, where did the gorilla come in? So <laughs> seriously, I had gone back to my office. Yeah. Now, Warfighter is a completely different thing than my other businesses. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So in my other this, life, this is where he where, likes where to George... think he's a professional. Yeah. <laughs> so Warfighter, where George lets to let his hair down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my guys, you know. But I live on the corporate side, yeah. and all of a sudden, I'm actually, I was taking pictures of a client's product and going to send them, and all of a sudden, this picture pops up of me, Scott, and Matt. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I started going through it, and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And it's just me, it's just the three guys. But I'm like, delete, delete, delete. I don't even get a chance to see the picture. Like, you, you don't want to see these. <laughs> hey, you know, the best thing is you guys didn't post anything weird. No, yeah. no, 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 no. John posted. So, <laughs> no, I didn't post no, no, anything. No, no. Why? John whoa, whoa. Because <laughs> I could remember. <laughs> no, oh, I, uh, I, yeah, I got in trouble for posting at Sturgis two years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I was there by myself, wasn't with Warfighter. I was just in. I got uh, the other business that Scott has is Silent Tree HQ Gunshot. Yeah, Silent Tree HQ. Um, and so I work there also. And uh, and so I have the logins for both for yeah. my personal and that. So you, instead of posting on... But yeah, but I, was, but I was drunk, so I had no oh, idea. Yeah. And so I do these live feeds Fucking up there. Fucking still did that shit to me the other day. He dude. does live feeds, and my wife sees oh them, my God. and she's not happy. It was the end of the world. Bro, bro. <laughs> Fucking steal. People are like, hey, Rocco, I have a question about this. Or, hey, I'm having a hard time. And I was like, hey, Steel, can you just check on those? He answers his Steel cast, right? His fucking Instagram. The dude's like, <laughs> who the uh, fuck are you? Uh, yeah, like, thanks, Steel. Like, where the fuck is Rocco? <laughs> <laughs> dude, I was laughing like, you fucker, dude. You made me look like an idiot. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hey, guys. It's been a great time. Let's go outside and smoke some cigars. You guys good with that? Yeah, let's Some do this. Cigars. Let's do it. Man, this whiskey's hitting me now. It's good whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Good whiskey. Yeah, so, yeah, Lead like, slinger rye. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. good. Right. I'm drinking that right bomb. now. That's what I'm drinking right now. Yeah, pair that with uh, a 5.56. Five, five, that's it. Uh, <laughs> the, more, the more they drink, they get the microphone. Yeah, they start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they bring it close to their mouth like the hill. <laughs> it's going to be in their mouth. <laughs> Hey, well, we appreciate you guys listening. Hope you guys had a good time. Uh, we're done before these guys start saying no, more no, weird no, I, stories. I think John wants to say one what, more thing. Last words, John. Good. I was, gonna, I was just going to talk about the placement that Scott was going to put the microphone before we started. <laughs> you know All right, we're out of here. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for being here.